Priestner, the gentleman of the Saskatoon Blitz. Thank you for joining me. Um, a reminder, we will take questions from viewers and for calling about anything Saskatoon Blitz or WHL Willow. Yeah. Even anything. Movies. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah actually. Anything. Like, yeah. The f I've played the franchise mode in NHL 20. It's really hard. How hard is it to be a general manager? It depends. Sometimes things go your way pretty good and you can uh, make some good draft picks and some good trades and you can kind of um, you can kind of trust your people and trust your gut and trust what you, you your homework. I think it's a lot like doing your homework at school. I think I think of every draft like like it's a final exam at school. And if you do a lot of work and a lot of studying and you you can sleep the night before knowing that you're going to do well in the test the next day. There might be a few questions you're not sure about, but at the end of the day, you feel pretty good. And if you rush everything and try and cram everything the night before, that's when you end up making some mistakes or making some decisions that are probably not best. So I always believe if you have really good people around you and you do your homework and really study hard, then, you know, you're, you'll, you can, you can do a pretty good job. So it can be a tough job, but it is also sometimes uh a really fun job when things go right. Yeah, especially for me because I am not really into picking. So once the draft hit, I was just like, what? So it, like, I didn't get the draft whatsoever, but I'm still a kid, so. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's the way that we get all our players because they have to make it fair for all the different teams in our league to be able to get players or else one team could just go to all the best players and say, you're coming on our team. So that way the draft, what it really does is gives every team a chance to pick one player per round. And then once you do that, then everybody gets a fair chance at all the best players. So then it makes it a lot more even. We don't want teams winning 25, nothing each game or something like that. Right. Is there any team success you look to modeling look to in modeling your team? There's lots of different uh, teams I look at in all kinds of different sports. I like, uh, obviously, in, in sports, the one that a lot of team people talk about is football, and that's the New England Patriots, and they've been able to be really, really good for a long time. And some of the things that their coach, Bill Belichick, has done is um, stuff that I've learned from, even though we have very different personalities and we approach things a little bit differently in terms of, I think he's a lot more of a tough kind of uh, hard-nosed kind of manager and coach than I would be, whereas I probably tend to be a little bit more on the new wave of of, of being a, more of a people or a player's manager, so to speak. But um, they're one team that I really look at. And then, you know, in hockey, there's been teams that have done things really well for a long period of time, and you kind of marvel at how they're always good, and they always, like Pittsburgh's another one that they really have built around a core group of players, and they've kept them in there, and and after they keep their big core group of players that they really love, like Crosby and Malkin, it's hard to get guys like that. They've done a good job keeping them and keeping them happy and and surrounding them with good pieces around them. So those are a couple of um, teams that I look up to. Who do you look up to? What what teams do you like? I'm honestly a Mount Vegas fan. Yeah. Well, I know their GM, Kelly McCrimmon, and he's, he's a really smart guy. He's yeah. – he's, He's a lot like that Bill Belichick guy. He's probably a lot like him. Very smart, very – makes good decisions. He trusts himself. And um, he's a guy that I've gotten to know a little bit and uh, over the years. And my brother played for Brandon when Kelly was the coach. So um, my brother was a goalie back years ago, and Kelly McCrimmon was the coach and the GM. So I got to know Kelly back then, and now I still talk to him from time to time. And he's a good guy to get advice from. We heard the same thing from Ryan Reeves. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's he's done a great yeah. job. Yeah, we heard that he's, in Ryan's opinion, one of the smartest minds in hockey. Yeah, I think that he gets goes a long way, and he has a master's degree in business, which he did um, while he was still being the general manager of the team. He went every single weekend. He drove from Brandon to Winnipeg to to do his masters. I think for two years, and that was something that inspired me to do my masters. And I got my master's degree last year. 
Um, I did mine online, which he probably couldn't do back when he did his, because I don't think the technology was quite there. But he was a good inspiration to me to do my master's degree because he showed he could do it while he was also being the GM of the Wheat Kings. Is there a sport outside hockey you look to for inspiration in modeling your team? Um, yeah, I think I look at all the teams of all the sports that I follow closely. I would say the sports that I follow most closely besides hockey are tennis because I'm a tennis player. Um, I was a good tennis player. I'm not very good anymore. But um, that was kind of when I was young, I had to choose between hockey and tennis when I was about 12. And I was pretty good at both. But I liked at the time I was um, really really loving tennis so I decided to quit hockey at that point and, and play tennis full time um, I couldn't do them both just because they were too time consuming to do both so I do sometimes look to tennis but that's an individual sport so um, I look more to those players those really great players like that are out there right now like Federer and Djokovic and Nadal and I look to them more for inspirational stuff on how they've been able to do so well for so long and how they're so mentally tough and I sometimes look at some of their quotes and things they say to the media after they have a big match and I'll send them to my coaches or we'll send them to the players and they can kind of have a look at them and see what kind of things top, top athletes from other sports do. But uh, that would be the sport I follow the most closely after hockey and then basketball. I'm a pretty big basketball fan and a pretty big NFL fan. So um, I'm a big boxing fan too. So I like lots of different sports. A uh, question from Tom, uh, my brother. Is the job hard? I would say it is a really fun job at times, but it can be hard. There's times when your team is not playing the way you want it, or um, maybe you. we had a couple years ago where we thought we were still a pretty good team, but in our division was three or four of the best teams in the entire country, all in our division. And as good as we played, we just weren't quite ready to make the playoffs, even though we had more points than a couple of the teams that made the playoffs in the division over. But because our division – our playoffs work on a division standings and not a conference standings. We actually didn't make the playoffs. And that was a really, that I would say that time is really hard because that's the kind of times where if you go to the grocery store and there's a big fan or someone that, you know, maybe thinks you could have made a better decision here or there, or they're mad. And, you know, you kind of feel like people are, you know, you let people down or people will be a little bit more kind of, um, hard on you. Or sometimes the hardest part I think of the job is more like the, the kind of trolls online, I would say, um, people that kind of go online and, you know, don't even have their real name on there, or they just have their first name and a, don't have their picture. They just have a logo of a hockey team and they, they'll send you some insults or they'll tell you that you suck or, um, they'll give you different kind of, uh, they'll give you kind of criticism, which is okay to get criticism, but sometimes it just gets really mean and stuff. So I try and stay away from that as much as I can, even though I'm a guy that's on social media a lot, but I try not to dig too deep into that because I've learned it's just not good for me um, in, how ha in my happiness in life to really worry too much about what p things people might say online because there's times we're doing really, really well and everyone will think you're the hero and that's not the right time to read that stuff either because then you kind of, you might get a bit of a a false sense of of yourself and you might as they say read the press clippings where you start to think you might you're some great thing and then a couple losses later and you're no longer that guy anymore so i try not to get too high or too low on what people are saying but that's the hardest part of the job for me is because i'm a pretty friendly person and i like to get along with everybody so when someone who i don't know just you know is being mean or something that's that's a little bit harder for me on a personal side but that's the hardest part of the job i would say This season, which team surprised you? Hmm. Well, the first name that comes to mind, and I don't like saying it because they're a big rival, but I'd say the Prince Albert Raiders. I thought, um, I thought their GM there, Curtis Hunt, did a really good job because he lost, like like we did. He had a great team last year, and he lost a lot of players that were really, really good. And I think a lot of people thought that they weren't going to be anything special this year because they lost so many players from last year's team, like we did. And you know what? They still went and won the division and did a great job. So um, that's the first team that I think of. Um, I also think the Lethbridge Hurricanes, that's a team people didn't really, they thought maybe last year was their year. And, you know, they got Dylan Cousins, who's a great player. They got him back from NHL camp. Um, and when he came back, uh, they really took off and they had a really good draft pick in the European draft with Ocular. That was a great pick. 
um, by their manager, Peter Anholt, who does a great job there. And they've got a really good coach in Brent Kissio. And I think they just did a, a really good job at, you know, taking the expectation, really riding with them. So those are the first two teams. More than any. Those are the two teams that really jump out to me that they exceeded expectations, I would say. My expectations. Good question. Don't ask me who didn't meet expectations. Then I get in trouble. Which player on your team surprised you this season? Which player in the league surprised you this season? Okay, I'll start with our team. I would say the player in our team that surprised me the most this season. Um, that's a good one. Um, I'm going to say... I'll, I'll give a couple names. One, I'll give Tristan Robbins, and I don't think it was a big surprise that he had such a great season, because, but for a guy last year who played a lot of his time on the fourth line and the third line because we had such a good older team, he was just a young guy, and he didn't really get as much of a chance. I was a bit surprised at how he took that real spark we gave him at the end of the season, and he really made it, made it run, and he really did a great job right from the first day. He was a big surprise to me as to how good he was, and um, I think Colton Doc would be another one because um, Colton's brother Kirby, as you probably have heard of him, um, Kirby was a guy that, you know, we weren't sure if we were going to get him back this year and they, they had a chance maybe to play together this year. And when Kirby didn't come back, I think a lot of people will always compare Colton to his brother Kirby because it's pretty natural to compare you to your brother, as you probably know, being a twin. And my dad's a twin as well. So I know all about that. So I think Colton really surprised me because he had a bit of a tough start to the year in the first 10 or 15 games. And he's always been that leading scorer on his team when he was playing Bantam and Midget. Um, and I think coming into our league, he probably was a little bit more like, whoa, this is pretty fast. And whoa, like the players here are older and they're, it's not so easy to score. And you know, really surprised me is when he got his first goal, I think it was 10 or 15 games into the season he really took off and he was one of our best players for a lot of the second half of the season. And that's hard to do as a 16 year old. So I'd say he was a big surprise to me too. I knew he would be really good, but I wasn't sure if he'd be really good as a 16 year old if, or if he needed a year until he would be really good at 17. But there were some nights where he was our best player and that's pretty great for a 16 year old. Oh, and you asked me about the league, which yes. players surprised me in the league. Um, well, the one that I mentioned last answer was Ocular on, on Lethbridge because this is a good story for, uh, for kids out there or anybody who might have gotten told they weren't good enough or something at some point in their life. That guy was playing last year in the Quebec Major Junior League, which is the league that, just like the Western Hockey League, it's the <laughs> Quebec version. And he was on a team, and that team chose not even to keep him, and they just let him go. They said, anyone else in the whole Canadian Hockey League can draft you in the European draft. And they didn't see enough in him, obviously, to keep him around. And he went to Lethbridge, and he had something like 40 goals. So I think nobody saw that coming. And that was a guy that was just told two months before, ah, we can do better taking someone we don't even know in the European draft instead of keeping you. And um, anyways, we, I, I was really surprised by him. I, I didn't see that coming. So good, good job by him. Um, do you think hockey would be more popular if it marketed – the personalities like Vegas does? I think, I think that, that, that would be a great, great lesson. lesson. I think hockey um, could, do, could, do, could especially learn a lot from Vegas. Vegas. Um, can, you um, can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Um, I think um, hockey, would, hockey would, would, do would do really well to do a little, little bit more of that. that. I, think I think they're trying, trying to. to. Um, if you look at a sport like basketball, where everybody knows all the big name players, I think there's a couple of reasons. I think the NBA has done a really, really good job letting players kind of explore their personalities, being a little bit, you know, everyone doesn't have to wear a suit and tie to show up to the, the games. They can kind of wear whatever they want, show their style. They allow them to have a lot of um, freedom of speech when they're speaking online, and they really let them have their platform. So if they feel strongly about something, they give them their platform, and they, they do a really good job of that. And I think hockey over the years has been more of a, keep your thoughts to yourself and really maybe speak in cliches a little bit more. And I think if teams did a little more of that, that'd be a great thing. I also think hockey's got a, just like the NBA, the players don't wear helmets and that's a big thing because you really get to see what the players look like and what they sound like. Whereas in hockey, they're wearing a helmet. So it's a little bit harder to really see their faces and get to know them a little bit.
I'd love it if it did. I think it's starting to happen. There's some players in the NHL that are becoming a little more outspoken. Um, and there's guys that are kind of speaking their mind a little bit more and they're not being punished like they might have been 20 years ago if they said something that wasn't exactly straight out of the company line, as they would say. I think as long as people are being honest and uh, are not going to be mean in the way they're doing it, um, there's always boundaries. Like there's times after the game, if I'm doing a media availability after a, after a playoff series or something and I didn't like the refing or if I didn't like something, I can't just start yelling about that because I think that doesn't help the league much. Um, but I think if people are respectful, they should always be able to kind of say whatever they think. What do you look for in players? Is there a certain type of player? Yeah, that's a great question. It's one that we always talk about with our scouts and our coaches because the way hockey is changing, um, skating is becoming so much more important than it ever used to be. In the WHL, maybe 10 or 15 years ago before you were born, as long as you were a big, strong guy, it didn't really matter how well you could skate. They really liked big, strong, tough guys, and now it's really changing. It's become something that's a lot faster and it's a lot quicker, and guys like Krinkovic and Robbins on our team who aren't the biggest guys, they can really thrive. So um, that's one thing we look for now in every player is they got to be able to skate. Um, I really look for character. That's one thing I like. I think if you have some weaknesses in other areas where maybe you're not that strong yet or maybe you don't have the best shot, um, but you're a really good teammate and you're one of those guys that will go block a shot with a minute left and the coach wants to put you on the ice with a minute to go, I, I don't think you can ever go wrong having too many of those guys in your room. So it's always a balance of do you want a really fast, skilled guy who might have a little bit of a bad attitude maybe or isn't quite as much of a team player or would you like a – sometimes you choose the team player who does everything you like but he might not be able to score that big goal like the skilled player. So you try and find players that have all of those qualities but – it's hard to find players that have all those qualities. So what I always go with is if you've got a really good character to you, that's the first thing. And then the other one I'd say right now is skill and skating. If those, those are the three biggest ones for us. Is there a player that the scouts didn't like but you did? Yeah, there's been lots of players that we kind of disagreed about um, over the years where maybe I like a player because I saw them play a couple of games where nobody else was there and I said, guys, you never saw him play that night in, in November when I went out and I saw him play and I was the only one there and he got a hat trick. Believe me, he's great. And then they'll say, well, we just saw him and he was terrible. So sometimes you have those arguments and you try not to take a player just because he had a really good game. And that's the problem with some of us when we're GMs. We don't get to see the top players of the draft too, too many times. So we have to make our decision based on what we see with our eyes but if I only see a player four or five times and one of my scouts has seen him 20 times, I really have to value what that guy says because I might have seen the four best or worst games of his life and I don't want to make a decision because of that. So there's been lots of times where we have those discussions and we really like our scouts to be honest and we have really good discussions leading up to the draft with our scouts. And, our, and there's certain players that coaches like but the managers don't like or the manager doesn't like as much but the coaches like and you just always are debating back and forth with the coaches and kind of trying to find a good medium where everybody's happy. How much does video analytics affect a player how a player is drafted? That's a good one. I think in the NHL it, it, it matters a lot if they're drafted to the NHL. At our draft we don't have as much video analytics. We do, some, we do some analytics on their numbers, what they do in Bantam. But since there's no videos of their games online, a lot of them are just played in small rinks because they're only 14 and they're not on TV. Um, it's a little harder to use video analytics, but I like your thought because I think that's coming a long way in the last few years. And the NHL teams, they do a lot of video work on our players if they want to draft them to the NHL. They'll spend a lot of time looking at them. And we use a video analytics program that breaks down all of our games and it tells us how many minutes and seconds each player played, how many shots they got, how many shots were blocked, how many times they blocked a shot, how many times, you know, they made a pass on the tape or how many times they made a pass that missed. So we can really look at our own players and other players in our league with video analytics. So it's a good question. We're starting to use it a lot. What age division do you start watching players? I start watching when they're 14 mostly because that's the year I'm drafting them and I got to know about 200 to 300 players every draft. So if I spend too much time worrying about the 13-year-olds and the 12-year-olds, that's too many names for my old brain to, to put together in my head. So I kind of like, I focus mostly on just the players that are in this coming draft. So that would be this year, 2005 borns. 
And then, of course, if there's a really, really special 2006 um, born like Berkeley Cat in Saskatoon, you can't help but notice him, even though he's a year younger. Anytime you go watch a Bantam game, he's sometimes the best player on the ice, even though he's a year younger. And that was the same with Kirby Doc. It was pretty hard not to notice him when he was 13. But for the most part, I really like to watch um, players only when they're 14 because um, I just – it's too many names for me to, to worry about what they're like when they're 12 or 13. Sometimes a funny thing, though, I'll go back and there's a big hockey tournament called the Brick Novice Tournament. And that was a tournament I played in when I was a kid for the Winnipeg Junior Jets. And it's a tournament where all the best players usually who are eight or nine years old and novice play. And sometimes for fun, I'll go back to their website and see who were the scoring leaders when they were eight or nine for this year's draft. And it's funny, a lot of the same players that were the best players at eight or nine are still the best players now. So it's funny how some things don't change. And you can laugh, look back and laugh and you can say, huh, those two guys were still the best two players when they were eight. And then there's guys that you've never even heard of who was the third best player and they might have even quit hockey. So it's kind of fun for me to look back on that. Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. There we go. Any weak players in Regina you have, may have noticed? Sorry, did you say are there any players on Regina that I've noticed? Away players. Away players? Oh, eight. Oh, eight players. Oh, I, I don't know. I've, have you been playing in your backyard a lot lately? Or uh, I got some good scouting reports on you. I heard you got a pretty good shot. You're a smart player. You know, and you're a kid that you likes to use his brain a lot. So I, I, I think you're going to be a smart kind of player. What are you, winger or defenseman? Uh, both. Wait, both? Okay. Well, guys that can play both wing and center, that's pretty good. That's hard to find guys that can do both. So um, anyway. Okay, well, if you can do that, then you're going to go a long ways because lots of guys can only play one position. So if we got a guy that gets injured on defense and our coach knows that there's a forward who can go back and play defense – that's a big thing. So keep that up. I like guys that can play all the different positions. Yeah. This year what hand do you shoot, left or right? Uh, left, but I can play left. right hand and right defense. Okay, cool. Is, is there a player you passed all, over that you regret not drafting? Oh, yeah. There's so many players I regret not drafting. Part of when we draft players, they're so young, they're only 14 years old. Um, part of the problem is a lot of them haven't even grown. I look at a player like Adam Beckman. He's from Saskatoon, and he won the MVP of our entire league this year, and he just signed with Minnesota. And I probably saw that kid play five times that year or ten times that year. In my home backyard, he was playing in Saskatoon, and he was probably five foot one. and I was probably thinking, oh, this guy will be a good um, – junior a player this guy will probably be you know a good little skilled five foot four junior a player and little did i realize that he was going to become six feet tall and be the best player in our league so i really wish i would have taken that guy they got him i think in the fourth or fifth round so that's a guy i kicked myself over maybe thinking he was too small so now i don't worry too much about how big anyone is in bantam yeah. i once uh toppled over it i was playing in uh adam and i thought i was playing and Adam and I went to sub in a PB three on three game, and I took on a guy two times my size and beat him. So. It's not the size of the dog; it's the size of the fight in the dog, right? Yeah. Um, Mark Stone was actually the sixth round pick in the WHL. Who was? Mark Stone. Oh yeah, he was on my brother's team in Brandon. They, they were teammates together. So sometimes you really don't know. You know, that's a guy that people didn't think he was a good enough skater because he was, uh, you know, not the fastest guy, but he proved everybody wrong all the way down the line, and he ended up becoming a really great player. You were getting ready for the playoffs before COVID cancer, canceled your season. How did that affect the spirits of your staff? Well, it's been really tough on our staff. They're trying to stay positive, and I think everybody knows there's bigger things in the world than hockey in a game. Um, but a lot of people in our staff, it's their job and it's how, how they make their living. So it's really a big deal to, um, for a lot of them because they're, you know, not having a livelihood as much anymore because there's no games to sell tickets for and it's really tough. So it really, the biggest, the hardest part I think was how quickly everything just got 
I almost think it's like unplugging your TV from the wall right in the middle of a great movie or something. It's just so sudden. And, you know, it wasn't like we had a lot of warning. It was just one day, all of a sudden, everybody's going home and everyone's staying in and there's no more hockey. And then a couple of weeks later, the whole season was canceled. So it's been really hard, but I've been really proud of how our guys have handled it because I think they all know there's a bigger, bigger things in the world going on. And, and hockey's just a game at the end of the day. How has COVID affected scouting players? We know that some of the Hockey Canada showcase events were canceled, or were you, uh, or were your draft plans in place of them? Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, every year in April, we usually get to see all the best players from each province play in every different weekend. So. We'd start in Saskatchewan one weekend. We watch the best players in Sask. They call it Sask first. Then the next weekend we go to Manitoba. We watch all the best players in Manitoba for the draft, and it's called Manitoba Cup. Then we go to Alberta, and then we go to BC. So it's almost like having a last study session before the exam. And the big part of that I'm going to miss about those is that you really get to sit down with some of the players in between their games and get to see what they, you know, talk and act like and look like off the ice. And you get to talk to them a little bit about your program and what Saskatoon would mean to you, what if they would want to come to Saskatoon if we drafted them. So what's really changed in our scouting is we're having to do all that over the phone and over Skype and over FaceTime. So it's really changed because um, it's harder to get to know somebody over Skype. You can, but it's easier in person. And when you've got 10 interviews, you can line up in one hour in person, it's a little harder to do that over the phone. It might take five days to do 10 people. So that's the hardest part for us on scouting. But I don't think you should put too much stock into that last weekend of how a kid plays. Because if you've seen him play 20 times all year and he has one really good weekend at the end of the year, that might bump him up a spot or two, but it shouldn't jump him up 50 spots on your list. Because I think always go with what you saw over the whole year. It's like if you had a kid in your class that was always – getting really, really good grades, and one time he got a bad grade on a test, he's still probably a pretty smart kid. I wouldn't judge him always just because he had one bad test, right? Has COVID affect any of your, any of your work habits? Yeah, everybody's got to work from home now, so it's really changed, and it's really hard sometimes. When I'm at home, I've got my almost two-year-old daughter, and she's running around, and she doesn't know what COVID-19 is, and she just wants to play all day. So um, sometimes I have to do some more of my work, like right now from 1 to 4 when she sleeps in the afternoon and has her little nap. And then that's when I can make some calls and work on the draft. And, and then other times I just try to go downstairs into my little office down here and do some work. And then if my wife needs me to help with the baby, then if my wife needs me to help with the baby, then I'll go upstairs and – help and then take a little break and do some more work and then when she goes to bed I'll do some more work. Um, what are some good qualities hockey player um, he look, what, do you, what are good uh, qualities you look for in hockey players? Well I think character is a really one I look for. I like hockey sense because I think if you're a really smart player maybe if you're not the fastest or the most skilled but if you're really smart you can play with good players. Um, I think smart players always find a way. Um, and then I really like players that play, I call it blade factor, but I like players that play really hard, even if it's a Tuesday night and minus 30 and moose jaw, as hard as they would play if the game was on national TV. I like guys like that. Chase Waters is a guy like that for us. He's a guy that it doesn't really matter. He could be playing in his backyard with his neighbors and he'll play hard and he always wants to do his best no matter what, who's watching. I think those guys go a long way. Any great movies or TV shows you have seen in, uh, in isolation? Tons. Something me and my wife like to do when we put the baby to bed each night. We actually play a little game. She tries because I'm a big movie fan. So she'll do a big challenge every night and she'll say, okay, I want to watch a drama from the 1980s or a comedy from the 2010s so then I go and I do a little googling and I try and find something that I think we'll both like and the challenge has to be that we neither of us have seen the movie so we're trying to watch lots of stuff that we haven't seen before and um, so that's something fun that we do each day to try and kind of keep things fun and um, I've seen lots of good old movies lately I watched one from 1940 the other day called Casablanca that's a really famous movie that I never actually had seen before and I finally took the time to watch it and I thought it was amazing. So every day we're trying to watch new movies from different eras, not just what's on TV right now, but we'll look around and try and find some hidden gems from 
from the 70s or 80s or 90s where if we find those hidden gems that we can watch and maybe we can learn a little something, uh, it's a little better than always watching the same stuff that, that's on TV every day. Yeah. Um, what have you been watching? You've been watching anything good? I don't really watch any TV. Um, talking about trying things new, I in our past episode, our fourth coming episode, I literally tried seven treat cheeses and the strongest cheese in uh, in uh, Italian Star Deli in Virginia. Wow, so, I, I gotta tune into that. That sounds awesome. Did you know something weird about me? I love cheese, but it has to be melted. I can't eat cheese unless it's melted. I know. I'm a really, really picky eater. That's just the way it is. So um, I don't know why. Oh, I saw one of our prospects joined. His name is Aiden Celebrini. He's a really, really good hockey player, and he comes from San Jose. He just joined the, he joined the conference. I actually was – he was why I was down in San, Fran San Diego – or, sorry, San Francisco watching uh, the Golden State Warriors. You know, I was telling you I was at the last basketball game. His dad works for the Golden State Warriors. So I was actually there chatting with him and his, and his – uh, Son Aiden's a really, really good defenseman from San Jose that we're hoping will be a blade one day. So um, he's uh, he's probably the most improved player that I've ever drafted. He was about five foot six or seven at training camp in August, and now he's almost six feet tall, which is crazy in only six months. And he's gotten so good. So he's a guy I'm really proud of, and I think he's going to be a great blade one day. And my friend Sony joined. Sweet, uh, Sweet. Sony. And Mark Andre Fleury, the unofficial mascot of. Vegas. Sweet. Sweet. So that was that, a big... That's getting loaded, loaded up. People up. are just getting fired, just getting fired up, up. Yeah. And Rob Peterson. That was like... It's getting loaded up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll have to I'll retweet have to it after, after and try and get, try and get a lot of views for you. I don't have too many followers. followers. I think I have like 1,500 like 15, 15, Twitter, Twitter followers, but I don't really but use um, Instagram very much. Very much. I, I, I lurk I on Instagram. I'm a lurker. I don't post anything. I just kind of pick things, check in on our players, make sure they're following the rules. I actually made a mistake. It's Bark Andre Bark Andre Furry. Bark Andre Fleury, that's a great name for a mascot. Based off, I I based off of um, Mark Andre Fleury. That's awesome. He was my brother's favorite goalie. Yes, he's my favorite goalie. He seems like a really, really nice guy. We have one of his hockey sticks. My brother got one of his old used hockey sticks that he played with back when he was uh, just a rookie. Yeah. He also has a brother named uh, Deke Henry Fleury. Sweet. Our mascot's um, name is Pokecheck. Have you seen him? You've met Pokecheck. I have, actually, yeah. I've met Pokecheck. You're a baby. A lot of kids like Pokecheck. He's a little scary for the babies, but he's a good I guy. Met so. <laughs> That's cool. I, I'm, not a, I'm not the biggest fan of mascots, but I'll definitely uh, go for Bark Andre Furry. Yeah, I think if there's any mascot to like, it's Bark Andre Furry. That's awesome. Um, the Blades will have to go down to Italian Star Deli next time. Yeah. You're down. Yeah, for sure. It's it's a very good deli. I've heard that. I'm gonna have to go check it out. As long as they're willing to melt the cheese for me, I'll check it out. Eh, they'll do anything. They yeah, I think they. I think they'll take care of us. Yeah. Thank you for joining us, and we will have um a live interview tomorrow, and I think tomorrow. You, and it will be posted on our YouTube channel later today. Listen. Great, I'll send the link out. Yeah. Great job interviewing. You asked him, me some of the best questions I've had all year. That's a great job. And I'm glad Mark Andre Furry turned in. Yeah, Sorry. that's great to see him. That's, we got a great cast of characters there in the chat. That's awesome. Yeah, we had a lot of great people in the chat. We did. Hopefully we, we send this out and lots of people can watch our chat because I thought you asked really good questions. Great job, buddy. Um, so... See ya, um, see you. Uh, yeah, see you soon. <laughs> say bye to your but brother, Tom. And, and sorry? Say bye to your brother for me and have yeah, a good we'll time staying uh, hunkered in the bunker down there. <laughs>